we turn our attention now to message sending, the semantics of sending messages using port, different types of possible semantics for message sending and how these can be expressed in us. And also, we look to the notion of messages in us. So message sending in us is asynchronous, means that the sender, once it sends a message on a port, can continue with the next statement. It is ordered per thread, it means if I send a message A and then I send a message B by an agent, then the receiver is going to receive these messages in that order, A and B. So they will appear in the stream A followed by B. Of course, there is no order from multiple threads because they have their own execution schedules. We're also going to look to what does it mean for a message to be first class. So we synchronous message, when we create a port here, and this thread is a sender, it sends this message, it will continue immediately here with the next statement after the send. It does not wait for the receiver to receive the message. So the message is asynchronous, continue immediately after sending. The sender does not know when the message is processed. So the receiver, in this case, the one that processes the message, could happen any time later, depending on the schedule. But what we know is that the message will be eventually processed by that receiver. Asynchronous reply. So in messages, you can have also, as we said before, a data flow variable as an answer back. So a sender send messages containing data flow variable for answer. They don't need to wait. They can just continue computation and they try to use that data flow variable when they need the computation. So, you, so, but of course, if you wish, you can wait for the answer and this we are going to discuss later. So the data flow variable create dependency in the computation. A sender can always continues until when he needs to use the data flow variable then if the data flow variable is not bound then he can wait for the results of the computation and of course this type of behavior can help avoid latency the sender can continue computation regardless of when the receiver has already delivered an answer or not so let us see how to express synchronous sending Synchronous sending is the behavior of sending a message and waiting for the receiver and an acknowledgement that the receiver has actually received that message. So in this case, the sender wants to synchronize with the receiver upon receipt of a message. This is known as handshake or rendezvous. And yeah, that is what we would like to do. Sometimes we even would like to wait until the receiver send back a result. So here is how to express uh, waiting for a variable. Waiting for a variable is necessary then to, to show you how synchronous sending can be implemented in a language uh, like OS with, that has this notion of data flow variable. So how the point is that how to express an execution that resumes only when a variable is bound. This is very easy because we know that conditional is suspendable. It means that a condition in a conditional will suspend until it can decide what is the true value of this condition. So here is the definition of wait x. You wait until x is either equal to 1 or not. In both cases you skip and you continue only after x is bound. So in that sense, wait x is not a primitive in the kernel language. It can be expressed as it is written here. It could be expressed by any way. But the most important notion, it is not part of the kernel language. So here is how to express synchronous sends. So a thread wants to send a message m on that port. So what it does, it creates a pair the message and some ACK variable, data flow variable, and it waits on that variable. That variable will be only bound by the receiver. 
okay so when the receiver receives the message it can bind the variable and it's only then the sender can continue this can be depicted as follows if this is time here is a sender and here is the receiver so this like the sender sends a message with m and ac the receiver binds the variable so ac will be bound to ok and sends back or the result of that binding will be visible at the sender sometimes after that and here the wait statement make you wait on ac make make the sender waits for at least this period of time so can we express asynchronous sends using synchronous sends yes it, it, ends, it, it turns out to be it's possible to express asynchronous sends using synchronous sends and the basic idea is that if you have a synchronous send you put it on a lightweight thread and you of course by having it in a lightweight thread you can immediately continue with the next statement of course it gets a bit more complicated if you want to do multiple sends one after each other. This is, we you have to be careful about that. So, as we can say now, that when the different variants of sending messages, synchronous and asynchronous, are mutually expressed, and as we have seen. So, let us now look to message order. Within a thread, if a process sends a message A, followed by a message B, then A will appear before B on the stream. It means that A, A will appear before B on the receiver's stream. Okay, that's very important. So that means that sends are then delivered or received in FIFO order. And if A is sent before B by the same thread, then A will appear before B by the receiving agent. Whereas, of course, if I have two different threads, I am sending to the same agent, so it's very well that the agent could receive A before B or B before A. Now, let's turn our attention to messages. A message, of course, is important in our agent-oriented programming. So, messages are first class. It means they are first class values. They could be bound to anything. They could be even computed at runtime. They could be tested, they could be manipulated, they could be stored. Once you receive a message, you just store it. And they can contain any data structure, including procedure values. Functions for that matter, of course. Or objects, by the way. So, first class messages are expressive because you can store them in data structure. You can modify them and forward them further. So, you can build like a a sequence of, of uh, filters on these messages, modify them until they arrive to the final destination. Let us now look to one example of this, which is the notion of a compute server. A compute server is an agent, and here is it's a reactive stateless agent. Here's what it do when it gets a message. The message is actually a procedure. If it's a zero argument procedure, it gets this message. If it's a zero argument function, you wrap it in this type of message. So here, when, it, when the agent receives a message like this, it will execute what is in the recipe, the procedure, basically. Here's a case when it receives a function, it will execute it, and it will return the result of the function R. This is bound to a data flow variable. Of course, we know that when you put this in a thread and we can create uh, stateless agents and procedure, as we said, can be contained in any messages, as you can see here. So why this is interesting? This is interesting, actually, if we think about distribution. If you have a data center where you have multiple machines and you have computation are coming in and you would like to load balance this computation on different machines. So you can spawn computation across several computers connected by the network in your data center or in your local area network and and you can load balance between them so so messages message sending is important a way to structure these kind of distributed programs you can think of it as a set again you have a number of compute servers here 
they could be application servers you have a load balancer load balancer when computation comes in it can send the computation to the machine that is actually has less load than the other so it can balance the load between machines so compute server makes sense in this setting OS in fact is um, support transparent distribution in OS 1.4 in particular we will show you an example of this and where you can spawn computation on multiple machines